Hello and welcome to today's live coaching call and community conversation. Today we are going to talk about why it is we don't see the weight loss on the scale that we're hoping for despite the fact that our body is changing in the direction that we're hoping that it's changing it. So welcome if you're jumping on live with us. You know this is our time to do some live coaching and to connect together as a community. And if you happen to be catching this on the rebroadcast, don't worry. Uh, You can join the community conversation there as well. Just use the comment section down below the video. I really do my best to make sure that I circle back around and make sure that you know that you are heard and seen here in our community because I know not everyone can make it live. Um, Okay, so I'm going to ask all the things that I usually ask. Please make sure you're subscribed if you're joining us on YouTube. Please make sure you're following if you're joining us on Facebook. Hit those like buttons for me, please, because again, this this does just let the platforms know that this is a community that is engaged and engaged community gets shared uh, through the algorithms and that just helps us um, as a whole, as a community. So I always appreciate that. The more women that are practicing this lifestyle, the easier it is for us to live our life authentically because everyone will start to understand all the benefits. So if you are new, my name is Diane Parham. I am the creator of the online course and community, The Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman. We start a new course every month, the first Saturday of every month. So if you're interested in jumping in with us, always make sure that you are on my email list at fortodaysagingwoman.com. Here in this community, we talk about all things for us as aging women. I like to define an aging woman as any woman who has the opportunity to live another day. So age is not bracketed with numbers. It is just us living our best life and transitioning as we do through different seasons. So welcome to um, anyone and everyone who wants to hang out with us here. So like I said, today we're going to talk about weight loss and we're going to talk about our body and changes that we're seeing when we start really digging into creating our most authentic life. And we do that here primarily with practicing intermittent fasting. And so why is it that the scale doesn't change? So let's talk about what the scale's job is, right? So a scale simply measures your total body weight in kilograms or pounds. It does not measure what your body is made up of, right? Like it doesn't segment it out. So your body weight or mass is really a a combination of your muscle, your bones, your blood, your fat, your water, like everything is calculated into that number. But for a lot of us, and again, this is a lot of what happens with society and body image and what a woman's weight is supposed to be and how much fat we're supposed to carry and yada, yada, yada. We associate a number on a scale to whether we're doing something good or something bad or something right or something wrong, despite the fact that we're seeing really positive changes with our very own eyes. So what I want us to think about today is focusing on what we see and how those changes are taking place and not let the scale send us down a downward spiral of making very like irrational decisions to affect a change. Because the weight, like I say here all the time, comes off when your body is ready for the weight to come off. And that happens when we start healing from the inside. So we want the healing to happen on the inside and the external part of that or what we see on a scale is just a result of consistency over time. That's all it is. And being really honest with the decisions that we're making for ourselves. So I wanna share a little story with you guys because today is my son's 22nd birthday. 22 years ago today, I tapped out at the hospital when I checked in at 227 pounds. I gained about 80 pounds during the pregnancy with my son. It, you know, in hindsight, it was a really fun time. Uh, it was the first time in my life as like a woman where I didn't care about like my weight or what my body looked like because I was pregnant, right? And so I ate all the things. And that 80 pounds that I gained was pretty much just second and third trimester. So I gained weight really fast. And it was just because I had stopped exercising because I couldn't manage my heart rate. And I, uh, and it didn't feel good for me to exercise. So I went from like really fit and exercising to nothing. And I ate all the things like I ate, like a, like I was eating for two, right? I fell into that mindset. And so I was really, really heavy, uh, when I delivered my son, I was very healthy. He was very healthy. So it didn't affect us in any negative way, but I understand what it feels like to gain a lot of weight and have to lose a lot of weight. 
And, you know, my son was big, he was nine pounds, but nine pounds, you know, and the pregnancy weight itself was so minuscule compared to that extra weight I put on from just not exercising and eating more than my body needed to have. And so it's stored a lot. So I understand how difficult it is to wrap our heads around losing weight and what it feels like to enter into that season. So I get it, right? But what I want you to understand today is what we want to do is really heal our bodies from from the inside out, right? We want to make sure that our body is letting go of water weight because remember, water weight is that thing that when we, if we're still stepping on the scale on a regular basis and our body is retaining water, we flip out because we've gained weight. And for some women, it's even gaining ounces that is a trigger for them. And it's just water weight, right? So we, we, punish ourselves for holding on to that inflammation or that water weight. And then we fail to reward ourselves when we let it go. So for a lot of women who go through the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course, because fasting is the best way to heal your body quickly on the inside, water weight is usually the first thing that goes, right? It's that big drop off on weight the first week or two, uh, just doing anything that's going to be healthier in your lifestyle. But we discount that and don't reward ourselves for letting that part of our weight loss journey happen because we say, oh, it's just water weight. And what I want you to think about is water weight is the thing, right? That weight that is literally from head to toe for a lot of us is that thing that's keeping us from seeing our definition in our physique, right? Our muscle definition. It's it's holding that weight even around the center. It's that inflammation that fogs up our brain. It's the inflammation that leads to chronic disease. So we have to get really good at making sure that anything that we do that moves in a positive direction, we are congratulating ourselves and rewarding ourselves and taking the win and not discounting it because it's one thing in this aspect and then punning or punishing ourselves or creating this negative mindset in the other side of that aspect. So remember, water weight is still weight and letting go of it is the best thing you can do for your overall health and well-being. The other thing I want us to start thinking about here in this community is how do we see ourselves? I preach this all the time that my passion and my goal for sharing what I share here is so that every woman has the opportunity to wake up every morning, plant her two feet on the ground and really like what she sees in herself and what she feels like when she starts her day. And when you have that kind of mindset, you can win at everything, right? You're just winning the day. And how do we make that happen? Well, a lot of it starts with really making sure that you're looking at yourself with honest eyes and looking for a lot of these changes that take place that you'll probably never see on the scale, right? I can, and I have, I always like to share these stories with you guys. Uh, when I was, um, I had a season of my life where I was training for a physique competition and I weighed 180 pounds and wore a size six, like pants, right? Shorts, jeans, whatever. Like I was a, just a brick house coming at you. I was small, I was dense and I was heavy because all of that muscle I was carrying around. I've also weighed 180 pounds and wore a size 14, right? Because my body composition was different. I didn't have a lot of muscle on my body. I was carrying around a lot of water weight. I was carrying around a lot of body fat. So same weight, completely different body composition. So we want to think about that too. Like what do we want our body to show up as? And what do we want to see with our honest eyes when we look in the mirror? You know, things like collarbones popping out, which is a really big thing. Can you feel your hip bones? Do you see muscle popping up for, you know, a lot of us, our goal is to create lean muscle with our with our body or what it is we're doing with our fitness. And what I want you guys to understand is muscle is just muscle. There's no such thing as lean muscle and fatty muscle. Muscle is just muscle. The appearance of muscle changes depending on what's sitting on top of it. So for a lot of women, they fear you know, building muscle on their body because they're afraid they're going to get bulky. Well, bulky muscle or the appearance of bulky muscle really does come from what's laying on top of your muscle. How much water is, um, is between, the, you know, the skin, the surface of your skin and where that muscle is lying on your body. How much fat is in between the surface of your skin and how much muscle is on your body. And making the distinction between those things will really help you create this healthy mindset about you changing what your body looks Looks like how your body's operating on the inside, and then not really caring about 
what the scale says. My advice for women is to take the scale out of the house if it is that trigger thing for you because it will make you go do desperate, irrational things in the you know heat of the moment. And what all what we really need to do is just stay consistent over time and be very honest about the choices that we're making and our body will adapt. It will change because our body doesn't want to carry water. It doesn't want to carry extra weight. It doesn't want to have to manage all the extra body fat that we have become really good at storing just because we're doing things in a way that doesn't serve us, right? So look at yourself with honest eyes. What is it that you want to see when you look in the mirror and how is it that you want to feel when you put your favorite jeans on? Then we create the lifestyle that's going to provide that for us. Intermittent fasting is the thing that's going to get you those best results, the quickest, the healthiest, and help you sustain those because that's what intermittent fasting will target, right? Giving us the opportunity for our body to choose the hierarchy in which it heals, so it's going to let go of that water weight first. Then we have to get really good at converting how we store and utilize energy. So we have to make sure that we're tapping in and draining those glucose tanks or those glycogen storage tanks so that we can actually get in and start using fat as a source of energy. When you utilize fat as energy, fat get you gets used up and it just disappears. So how is it that you see yourself? What do you want to see when you look in the mirror? irrelevant of what a number is going to show you when you step on the scale. And then I promise you that number is just going to be like, what you, if you step on a scale, you're going to be like, whatever. I feel great in my jeans. I feel confident when I wake up in the morning, everything is spinning the way it's supposed to spin. And I can't imagine living any other way. That's how we really, really get healthy with not losing weight, but noticing, appreciating, and really, um, like celebrating the wins that we have when we see the physique changes, right? And the strength changes. I'm a big, big advocate of women being able to push themselves off the ground. Thank you for the commercial, you know, that was done with the woman who fell down and she couldn't get herself back up. That's really motivating my personal strength training. I could care less what my arms look like. Can I push my body off the ground? I don't want to ever fall down and not be able to get myself back up. And so my goal is to do upper body training, right? I do push-ups, I do plank work, and then guess what happens? Not only can I push my body off the ground, but my arms look really nice in a tank top because the end result is I'm going to develop that type of physique. So make sure your why is centered on the right ideal so that you don't end up doing drastic desperate things to create a change that if it's not authentic to you and it's not deep into your whys of what it is you're doing, it's going to be very short lived and you're probably going to end up doing more harm to your body than you are good. And I know there's enough women in this community, myself included, who have been down that road and it's not very fun. Sustain an authentic lifestyle that it will allow you to look and feel your best. And I promise you, you will look and feel your best. The scale weight will be irrelevant to you because you're going to love sliding into your jeans. You're going to love summertime time when you can wear your strapless dresses because the work that you have done consistently over time is going to reveal a body that you're proud of. That is the best way to really uh, get over the weight issues that a lot of us have. Okay. So I have weighed uh, 200, over 200 pounds. It was really hard to get that weight off. I uh, was fortunate to have a husband who ate with me. So he was on the journey to lose weight after we had our baby as well. My girlfriends all were willing to eat with me when I was pregnant. So we all went on the weight loss journey after I had my baby and we all lost weight together as well. So, you know, misery loves company, I guess, but we also made sure that we helped each other on the journey to get back into where we needed to be as well. So you can lose weight anytime you decide you want to lose weight. That's never the problem. But the route that you take to get there and making sure that you're looking at the changes in your body so that you can appreciate them and the beauty that we have to move our body and get around our life and be able to do things on our own because we're building strength and we're going to keep our body safe and we're not going to be injured. And we want to see ourselves like I see myself as the grandmother 10 years from now that's doing all the fun things with her grandkids or doing all the fun things with my grown adult children. And I don't want to be limited because I have done harm to my body not, uh, you know, not valuing the correct system for getting myself where I needed to be. Okay. So let's open up the conversations. I'm going to read the comments here and then I'll answer any questions you guys have. So if you haven't done so yet, leave a comment in the comment section and I will make sure I circle through and get you guys all recognized. Again, I always like to just remind everyone that we do have the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course. I help you think through all of these things 
inside of class. We do have one starting July the 2nd. Registration is open. You can go to fortodaysagingwoman.com. You can register today. Get on my email list. Um, either way, um, you have a chance to get into class with us in July. Okay, so let's see who we have here today and who we can help. Susan, have always been a cardio gal and just blew off lifting weights most of the time, but now I lift weights watching your videos. You inspire me. Day seven of 20-hour fast and four-hour feast feel super. Awesome, girlfriend. I'm super happy for you. Yeah, you know, weight training for me really did become a thing that I valued when, like I say, I had to like seriously look at my life and go, I, I fell down running. I've been falling down my entire life, but I fell down running a couple of summers ago and I was so excited about the fact that I just quickly put, you know, picked myself up and I said I never wanted to be that girl that's laying on the street and can't get myself up because I've tripped, right? And so that motivates my strength training. Um, and, you know, cardio is not a bad thing. Cardio is a great thing. That's my jam. I will, I will participate in cardio for as long as my body will hold up for it. But I now incorporate other aspects of fitness to support my cardio because I want to run forever. And so now I do strength training designed for runners and it really has helped me stay a little bit more committed. So I'm super excited for you, girlfriend. Um, if you love cardio, don't give it up. Just make sure that you're supporting your body so that you can enjoy it for a long time injury free. Sandy, uh, January, 2022 grad from hot and humid North Carolina, girl, I hear you. Added weights with my girl Janine Olson last month. We are killing it. I know you guys are killing it, and I love that for you guys. And then there's my girl Janine, September 2019 grad and midlife mindset member since the start. Love this lifestyle. Yeah, girlfriend, I love having you with us. Um, I am um getting, I'm doing the final touches on my midlife mindset shift course. So my grads, just be patient with me. I just want to make sure I have every all my ducks in a row before I launch it for you guys. And we are going to spend a month on training smart and zone two training. Um, I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. So just hang tight with me. I know you guys are like anxiously awaiting getting inside the next midlife mindset shift course, but I have some new things that I'm trying to incorporate and I don't want to roll it out to you guys until I get it just right. Janine, so happy to share my health journey with my bestie, Sandy Rosser from New York, from North Carolina. We are killing this together in daily online workouts and lots of sharing about IF. Yeah, for sure. You guys are killing it. Find a friend. You guys, if you're struggling to stay committed or consistent over time, find a friend who's willing to be your partner in this. And they're everywhere. You just have to ask enough people, right? And then that way you have someone that you can look forward to hanging out with and really creating your most authentic life with. There's nothing that's more fun than that. And I love your guys' relationship. It's so cool. Aaron, glad to be here. Girlfriend, Aaron Danielle, so happy to have you here with us. Um, thanks for joining us live. Sabusk, hi, Diane. Fasting is the hack I needed to kickstart weight loss, but sometimes I fall off, binge instead of feast, gain weight back, but I'm not giving up. Any tips on how to avoid the cycle? No, no tips. I just say congratulations. You're alive, right? And you're a woman. And, you know, men go through this too. And it's just life. Life happens, right? The best thing you can do if you find yourself going in one of those cycles is to really reframe it in your brain and rephrase how you describe it. So here's how I would describe what you're going through. Um, sometimes I lean into life, right? And I enjoy life as it's happening and unfolding around me. And in those seasons, I give myself some grace and some leniency. When I feel like I'm going too far, I create boundaries and I start to pull myself back to what I know allows me to look and feel my best while also living my most authentic life. So it's an ebb and a flow and you have to give yourself permission, right? And you're not binging. You're just probably enjoying your life a little bit more. Or if you're in a stressful situation and you feel out of control with your feasting, then you have to really dive deep into why it is you let stressful situations do that to you because stressful situations are not going to stop. You have to learn how to manage them in a different way. So summertime happens to be my loosey goosey season. You would think it'd be the opposite, right? Um, because you know, we wear, uh, you know, shorts and tank tops and all that kind of stuff. But we live uh, a fun life during the summer with my family. We go out to dinner a lot and we sit out on patios. And so it is my looser time. And I am okay with that because I know what to do as soon as summertime's over and the kids are back in school and everybody's on their own routine. That's when I have the opportunity to dial it in myself also. So you get to decide that for yourself. And sometimes you just have seasons that are like that. 
just don't ever give up. Don't throw in the towel. There's no such thing as a wagon. You know, make sure you're changing the vocabulary that you use when you're talking to yourself about it. And the kinder you are with yourself and the more honest you are with yourself, the easier it is to get out of that. Jackie scales. Ugh, right. So just throw it out. Like no, there's, there's no weight that's going to determine your health, your blood work with your doctor, how you feel every day, how you're managing your life. Like all of those things are going to determine how healthy you are. The weight thing, just like everything else is totally askew, right? It's not even accurate. Um, so just feel good about you and find a place where you like your physique, you like your energy, you like how you're sleeping, you like how your clothes are feeling on you. And that, my friend, is going to be the weight that's going to be best for you. And if you don't want to know what that number is, I give you permission to put that scale away. It's not going to help you in any way. Wanda, watch a TED Talk with Max who does research on dementia and the number one lifestyle advice even before food and brain exercise was IF. Delightful surprise. I say that here all the time, right? Um, because we have just so much backup and the benefits that we get from intermittent fasting is the autophagy stage and autophagy is your body eating away at what is damaged and the best way to provide that for yourself is just fast consistently over time for sure. Danita, hello, girlfriend. Uh, Danny, 2018 grad. I love this topic. It serves as a valuable refresher as always that you do for your knowledge. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, here's the deal. Like I really like to be very honest about my own journey with the ups and downs of weight. Um, I was in the air force when I, I joined when I was about 19, I went in again, super fit because I was afraid of basic training. So went in super fit was, you know, running six miles a day. And all that came to a complete stop when I, uh, entered into basic training because the goal was to be able to run a mile at the end. And I went in being able to run six, um, and did all kinds of exercises because I didn't have confidence in my physical abilities. And then we ate three square meals a day, which I just naturally never ate that way. I came out of basic training on what the military called at the time, their name, not my name, not politically correct at all, was the fat boy program. So I was put on the fat boy program. And I remember when I was in Biloxi, Mississippi for my, my training for the job I was having in the military, I was just telling my husband the other day, I was out on a run one day and a car full of guys drove by and they called me a beached whale. Like I know what it feels like to have to manage weight. Um, and I also know how easy it is to be in denial about the things that we're doing to get what it is we say we want. So I come to you guys with my own personal experiences as well. And, um, and the scale, like I said, for me has been up and down my whole life. And I have been the heaviest at some of my best times. And, and I have been at that same weight at some of my worst times. So I don't really put any value on the scale uh, weight at all. And I'm just a big, heavy girl. I always have been. I always will be. And I, I just don't mind that at all. Wanda, and you talked about insulin and IF. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Sabinchin, I think it is. I was on track and almost gained all the weight back. I've tried the same approach again, intermittent fasting, low carb, and now I am not losing any weight. Wonder if this is related to my hormones. It's absolutely related to your hormones because you can't lose weight until your hormones are balanced out. This is the premise of what I teach inside the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course. So I invite you to come join us for the July 2nd class. I promise you, you'll get back to to where you need to go and you understand how to get there for sure. Dr. Valerie Morrison, it's so good to have you with us from Florida, Seattle. Hello. Um, I'm trying to switch my fasting time frame to earlier in the evening so that I can feast earlier in the day. Yeah, for sure. You know, I always say build your fasting protocols around your life. Don't change your life to meet a perfect fasting protocol because they don't exist. So play with your windows for sure. And then find what works for you so you can be successful. Mally, I just want to feel great and look good. The scale is ancillary. Yeah, for sure. You should have the opportunity every day to put your two feet on the ground and look and feel your best and do that in a way that feels the most authentic to you. And you're the only one that can define, look and feel your best and your most authentic way. Don't let anybody else dictate to that to you. You get the, um, the privilege of doing that for yourself. Patrice 2020, uh, September, 2020 grad. I need to learn to celebrate my wins and not focus on the negatives. Thanks for this class. Yeah, for sure, girlfriend. You know, that that is the thing, right? We beat ourselves up for the things that don't go right, and then we fail to reward ourselves when the things go right. 
So spend some time in, in grace and a pause when things are going your way, because that's where we then cement the value system of things going our way. And so make sure you're spending that time as well and giving yourself a pat on the back. You deserve it for sure. Jerry, thank you so much for this inspirational talk. You helped me more than you know. Oh, I, I know how much I helped you, girlfriend, because it is a struggle for sure. So keep your head in the right place about this, I promise you, your body will pay you back in kind when your mind is leading with the correct mindset. It, your body doesn't know what else to do without your mind, right? So get your thoughts and your mindset on track, and I promise you, your body will follow you because that's just the easiest route for your body. Chubby Cheeks, girlfriend, so glad to see you. Uh, thanks for circling back on this topic. I'm in for the July class. I know, girlfriend, and I cannot wait to have you in class with us for sure. Joy 80, I have been fasting for years, 16, eight, but just from watching your videos, I upped my fasting to 20 hours daily and feel so much better mentally. And when I do cardio in a fasted state, I feel fabulous. Hello, right? Such a great way to do cardio. I just did a run this morning. I did a 45 minute run and my whole focus was on managing my uh, target heart rate. And I have a three prong approach. I'm going to teach this inside the midlife mindset shift course as well. Three things to do to really keep your heart rate in that fat burning zone is your thoughts, your breaths, and your form. And if you can keep those three things in focus, you can totally manipulate what your heart rate is doing. And it's super, super fun to do. So I'm glad uh, you're doing well. Uh, joy for sure. Okay, let me see. I think I just lost. I hate when my comment section jumps around on me. Okay, let's see. Unjo Kyung, I think it is. I just came across your channel. Thank you for the info. But does vitamins and supplements break the fast, like collagen powder, vitamin D? Collagen powder 100% does because it has protein in it. I would say if your goal is to really get into the deep healing aspects, aspects of fasting, never, ever risk a fasted state. So I would put those in my feast. Peggy, hello. This is such great information. Perfect for today. Thank you. You're super welcome, Peggy. So good to have you with us. Vicky, can I drink iced tea with Splenda instead of coffee? You can drink whatever you want, but if you're in your fasted state, I would not put anything in my tea. Jennifer, um, I'm not hungry at 20 hours. Should I make myself eat or just keep fasting? Uh, it depends on where you are in your healing journey for sure. Um, if you're in your training season of your hormones, which is what you are in if you're inside the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course, I say train your hunger hormones first. Once you get really established and mature and your hunger hormones are more settled down and you're not feeling hungry, if you're not hungry and you eat, then that's classic overeating and your body is is now in that place where it's really efficient at finding its own resources to fuel itself. So it all just depends on what, what, what stage of your journey you're in. Mally Jones, I'm registering for the July class. I want to get out of pre-diabetic status. I love your content. Mally, I was pre-diabetic. I was pre-diabetic um, when I just was like in my 50 to 51 time frame. It shocked me. Shocked me. I was a health and fitness coach and still became a pre-diabetic doing all the right things. So uh, it happens to us, right? The most important thing is what you're doing right now. And I think you're on the on a great path. You don't want to go any deeper. So you can head it off. And then once you are no longer pre-diabetic, you don't carry that title around, right? So you can cure pre-diabetes for sure. And I cannot wait to have you in class with us. It'll be an honor to help you uh, take that path for sure. Sandy, community makes the difference. I never have to do this alone. And that makes me successful every single day. Absolutely, girlfriend. We are always going to be here to support you and celebrate your wins with you and hold your hand when things get tough. Or maybe you, uh, you know, uh, had a little season of freedom and you want to come back. We will always be here. And I know you and Janine are there for each other as well. Uh, Serena, I started the 24 about two weeks ago. Loving it. Yes, girlfriend. It is the best, the best protocol. Mm, Joe, uh, fasting has been causing constipation, even with vegetables, what to do. Okay. So here's what I always ask when people uh, come to me and say they're having constipation issues. Is it painful, toxic backup feeling, or are you just going to the restroom less? Because remember less in means less out. And so if it's feeling toxic and backed up and, and you're having like some abdominal discomfort with it, then, uh, I would recommend getting, um, more water and maybe some magnesium into your system and seeing if that helps. If it's just, you're not going as frequently, then that's just a common sense result of what's happening. When we put less food in, we just have less food come out. Um, Anna Mallover, 555. I began IF for weight loss, but as I have been learning 
of all the healing benefits that has become secondary. I have fibro and degenerative disc disease. So working out is a challenge. Yeah. You know, and here, you know, here's the thing with intermittent fasting, um, any mull over, um, is that your body is amazing at healing itself. So I would focus solely on deep healing fasted states and making sure that you're feasting on fuel that's going to also, uh, food that's also going to uh, create that healing environment for your body. I took an entire year off of working out when I was trying to reverse a lot of the things that were ailing me uh, when I was diagnosed as a pre-diabetic. And it was the best gift I gave my body. It was an entire year to just heal on the inside. I didn't even skip a beat when I was ready to come back to working out. I was coming back in a very healed state and it was very, very easy for me to get back into. So give yourself a little bit of grace and just heal one thing at a time. Ilani, I believe it is Liani. Um, Love your channel. Thank you so much. I was doing alternate day fasting and loved it. Was a bit challenged on workout days when fasting bowed out a lot of cardio and weights. Okay. I, I am my easy peasy. I don't want to have to think about a bunch of things kind of person. So alternate day fasting is nothing is not anything that I've really enjoyed. I've tried it. I've tried every aspect of fasting. Trust me, uh, because I want to be able to come to you guys with my own personal experiences. And so intermittent fasting is the easiest in my opinion on what to do, because you just do the same thing every day. You just rinse and repeat. You're not wondering, do I eat today? Do I fast today? How many calories am I supposed to eat? Like, eh, we don't worry about all that. You just fast long, feast well, and when you're ready, you train smart. Super, super easy. Um, it takes several minutes. I take several medications which shouldn't be taken on an empty stomach. Can I take them with a couple of cherry tomatoes or a lettuce leaf or a sugar snap pea without ruining my my fast? You will actually, you will absolutely break your fast once you feast. That's just the name of the game. Um, what I always recommend for this, and I think we answer this question every video, is um, if you have to take medicine and you have to take food or that's what the instructions are, I say call the pharmacy or call your doctor and ask them why. Why do I have to take food? So many women have come back and told me that their doctor was like, yeah, no big deal. You don't even really have to take food with this. So check and make sure that that's still a relevant thing. Or maybe they just say that for the general population, but for individual purposes, it's not the golden rule. So ask why you have to take food. And then, yeah, those are probably some of the better ones you could do. Even like a, you know, a cup of unsweetened almond milk or something like that. If it's something that is going to be upsetting your stomach, then you're just putting a line, you like, you know, a line on your stomach so that it doesn't, um, cause you any aggravation. Um, I have degenerative disc, disc disease and nerve damage in my back. Working out changed everything for me. I started out slowly and worked my way up to the weightlifting. You can too. Yeah, for sure. Healing first. So heal first, then get into the workouts. Um, your body heals on a cellular level when you're lo fasting long and fasting clean. So give your body that opportunity. And Sandy, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, Bridget, so excited to start the July class. I already learned so much great info watching all your content. Yeah, there's this thing that clicks in our brain, right? When we decide we're going to go to the next level, you start acting like your decision. So congratulations, Bridget. It's going to be great in class. You, everything will start clicking for you. And then when you get in class, you're just going to tweak the things you need to tweak and just lean in hard to what I teach you. You're going to come out the other end, just feeling absolutely amazing. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, you are super welcome. Karen, hi from New Hampshire, new to this. Well, welcome girlfriend. Hopefully you've subscribed on YouTube. Take a second to hit that like button for me. And then we come here every Monday and Thursday at noon central standard time. And I have these kind of conversations with you guys. Leanne have switched to IF eight hour eating window, window, a little more tricky for me. Yeah. You know, for some people, increasing your fasting window really is based on personality what your discomfort level is, like what are you willing to be uncomfortable with? Because it is uncomfortable if you're not used to not eating all the time or, or if you're not used to not using food to change the way it is your body is feeling. So uh, for some people, you have to ease into it. I was uh, like, I'm just going to do it because I don't want to be diabetic anymore. And I went straight into the 20 once I stopped listening to all the bad advice on the internet. And um, it was rough for a couple of days. I, this is why I teach a class on this now to really guide you through why you're feeling the way you're feeling. A lot of times we don't give ourselves the gift of the 20 hour fast because we don't understand the why our body is feeling the way it is. And it's a scary feeling if you don't know why. So uh, class is a great place to learn all of that. 
Dr. Valerie, this is week two for me in your program. I have a good first, I've had a good first week, increased the water intake and was successful at getting to a clean 20 hour fast. Yeah, that's it, right? It is just giving your body that time to ease into it. Getting that water in is key. So uh, Dr. Valerie, I'm so glad that you made that connection and you're seeing and feeling the difference. So now when you have a day where you're not feeling 100%, instead of reaching for food, you could reach for water and just stay within that fasted state. So I'm so, so excited for you, girl. Um, it just gets better with time. Pam from Minnesota and June 2022 participant at the beginning of week two. Happy to be part of your community. Pam, I am so happy you're part of our community too. Once you're here, you're always welcome. So once you're a grad, I can't wait for you to come back and say June 2022 grad, um, and then just come back and share with us all the amazing new things that are happening for you as well. Cynthia, I'm confused about lumen and taking your blood glucose. Do you do that in conjunction with each other or is it one or the other? Um, I teach this in my advanced class. Once you're a graduate, we're going to dive deep into this. Uh, during this next session. And I can talk about this more on Friday on Instagram. I do a metabolic flexibility live coaching over there. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. You can uh, click on, if you go to my YouTube page or my Facebook page, uh, there's usually information there or good. Just go to for today's aging on Instagram. And you can bring that question over there. I put a question box. You can submit the question, um, but it's a lot to go into here um, during this discussion. Sue, so do appreciate your positivity. Thank you for your mindset content. Yeah, for Sure, girlfriend. If our mind ain't right, everything else just is so much harder to uh, to adapt to. So we got to get the mind right first, and and trust me, the body just comes with comes along for the ride. Tanya, love your passion for the aging woman. I do twenty four IF, trying to start weight training but lack motivation. What sort of beginner weight training would you recommend, and when is the best time to do it? So motivation is a mindset. Um, you get to choose if you're motivated or not. So if you want to get into strength training, choose to be motivated about it. There's nothing else I can say about that. Um, the results that you see and how you start to feel differently when you get consistent with your strength training will change your mindset. And in the beginning, you have to just do it even if you don't feel motivated. So I say just go for it. Stop thinking about it and just side today at whatever time I'm going to go in and get my strength training done and you just get it done and you just get it done and you just get it done. And then before you know it, it's just part of who you are. Motivation is one of those things that I think is another one of those, um, lame excuses as a society that we use to excuse ourselves out of cheating ourselves. So change your mindset around that. Um, beginner weight training. I would say if you have no experience in weight training, I would either Go to a gym and have one of their trainers there kind of walk you through some things to do. Subscribe to um, a platform like, you know, I am a Peloton junkie. So I do my strength training with very, very uh, well-versed coaches there. I'm also, a, you know, a certified exercise nutrition coach and I've been I was a group exercise instructor, so I have my own background and what I need to do for me as well. But I love getting, um, you know, tips and tricks and learning new things from coaches as well. So find something that's going to be able to do the thought work for you until you can really develop your own routine for yourself. So I hope that helps. But yeah, don't let that motivation thing trick you into thinking that it's okay to not just get started. Um, okay. Joy, so agree, so agree about the scales, almost addictive and impacts on your emotion, have thrown them out from time to time, but I've always bought them, brought them back. My clothes tell a more honest truth. Yeah, you know, if, you're, if your jeans are tight and you weigh less, your jeans are still tight. If your jeans fit great and you're confident in them and you weigh more, your jeans feel great and you're confident in them. Like, let's just run with that, right? Uh, because the scale is one of those things that's just so funky and so inconsistent. And here's the other thing. I, with my brain, might decide on Monday, I'm going to step on the scale and my expectation is that my body is going to let go of weight. But what if all the changes that I just made has led my body to deciding it's going to let go of weight on Thursday? Still lost the weight. But from Monday to the next Monday that I'm going to step on the scale, I'm going to be a hot mess mentally and emotionally because I stepped on a scale when my body wasn't ready. So remember, 
We make these decisions about our body, but our body is doing its own thing. So give yourself the grace to just step off it for sure. Marcia, I was pre-diabetic and started IF 18.6 three months ago. I went from 5.9 to 5.5 and have lost eight pounds currently trying 424. I still get really hungry in the mornings. Anything I can do about that? You have to train your hunger hormones. And that's what I teach you how to do inside the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course. So the best thing I could tell you, Marcia, is to jump inside class with us on July 2nd. Claire, only just found you today. Well, girlfriend, today is your lucky day. You are just what I needed to hear. Have noticed a real difference recently when I have stretched my 18 hour fast into 20. I need to stick with it and carry on. Yeah, for sure. The most important thing for a lot of our new people here to remember is you have to retrain your body. You have to retrain your hormones. You have to retrain the signaling that your body sends you when it's feeding time because there, our body has these set points, right? So you have to do the discipline and the consistency to just retrain your body. There's a little bit of discomfort in that, but how you manage discomfort will, de will really determine how you end up on the other end of that. So I say go all in. You're going to be uncomfortable anyways. Be uncomfortable with carrying around extra weight. Be uncomfortable with pre-diabetic diagnosis. Be uncomfortable with whatever it is you're uncomfortable with or take a week or two and be uncomfortable retraining your body so that you can be comfortable for the rest of your life. There's always some form of some form of discomfort for sure. So, uh, Claire, I wish you all the best, girlfriend. Um, Mender, mom, I stopped doing um, intermittent fasting. I keep gaining weight, hoping for some tips. Um, I have five years of videos here, five or six years worth of videos here. So you're not going to be lacking in tips. Are you going to be lacking in implementation is the question I want to ask you. So if you want to get back to intermittent fasting and you want to stop gaining weight and you want to reap the benefits you had when you were intermittent fasting before, you have to implement intermittent fasting. I can't give you any tips that are going to change your mind. You have to change your mind yourself. Uh, Jerry, do I need fruit for antioxidants? I have zero um, idea. If you need fruits for antioxidants, that's something that you're going to have to determine for yourself. Dr. Valerie, thanks for the happy face. Paige McPherson. Um, hello from Arkansas. Love your channel. Is it okay to put a small amount of good quality salt on your tongue when feeling sick to my stomach while in your fast? Um, so I always say put it underneath your tongue and yeah, salt is great. Um, I used salt when I was training, uh, for some longer runs. So about mile 10, I would put salt underneath my tongue. Last two miles were easy peasy. So salt is kind of an energy stimulant, I guess I would say for your body. And most of us are lacking that electrolyte. So yeah, sure. It's fine. But, um, you shouldn't feel sick to your stomach when you're in your fast. So try to get to the bottom of why you're having that experience too. Colleen, starting the second week of six, four, six, four, what is that? Intermittent fasting for today's aging woman. Oh, six, four, the June 4th intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course, focusing on listening to my body and my needs. Love your course. Colleen, Focusing on what your body is communicating to you is key number one. So you are winning at this game for sure. Our body is always talking to us and we fail to listen to it and respond in the correct way. So that is the premise of the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman course. So you're doing all the right things, my friend. Just keep rinsing and repeating. Keep listening to the lessons in class. Keep figuring out how to implement what's applicable to you into your life so that you can stay authentic to you. And if what I say isn't applying to you, then girlfriend, you have all the my permission to just leave that part out or maybe revisit it at another time. So Colleen, I can't wait to call you a June 2022 graduate. Super fun for you. Um, when, what is your July class and how do I attend? So it's all online. There's nothing live. You go and you register, you get a login, you uh, on July 2nd class will start and then we spend three weeks together. I teach you a lesson every day. Um, so just go to fortodaysagingwoman.com. All the information is there. Uh, Jenny, Jemmy, I think, do you recommend a scale that measures your body fat? That way you can see if you're losing fat, even if the scale isn't budging, if you can handle it. So I always say only invest in those type of scales if you can really um, handle what that information is for that day. And again, just remember your body is always shifting and adjusting. So I would say, you know, pick a frame of reference that's going to work for you. Meaning if like, don't do it every day because your body goes up and down every day. So like once a month, I would say, 
step on the scale or once every two weeks, step on the scale, make sure you do it at the same time of the day. And that, you know, it's on a day where you feel like you can handle whatever the results are. Um, but you know, again, if, if that's what your aim is, then I would say that might be a good thing, but you just got to make sure that the frequency isn't going to be too much. So you allow for a real true change that's going to stick. Um, so hopefully that helps you with that. Uh, Ty, hello from Tampa. Thank you for your videos. You are welcome, girlfriend. Okay, a couple more and we're out of here. Uh, Anna May started with 16.8, now 18.6. Would love to do 24. My eating window is early afternoon. Hard to ask my husband to eat even earlier to do that. And yeah, you know, that's between you and your husband for sure. Uh, you might be surprised if you ask him, he might be willing to do it if he sees that you're looking and feeling your best and uh, a happy wife is a happy life. So you never know. You might want to ask him. Miss Congeniality, greetings. Dr. Valerie, I did have an issue over the weekend. I think I threw myself into a hypoglycemic event, breaking my fast with high carb and sugar. Not a bright idea. Now fully understanding, feeling my body. Yeah, you know, and we all do it. I did that one time uh, when I was on, you know, kind of my learning journey with how to break my fast and when I was questioning fruit and all those kind of things. And I had too much watermelon, believe it or not, and I was so sick. Um, so again, those are all those things that, you know, write those down in your journal and just, you know, so you can remind yourself that you've tried this and it doesn't work. So you don't do it, um, too frequently, but yeah, that's a, that's one of those lessons that's kind of tough, but I love them because you experience that for yourself. You didn't have to have someone dictate to you what to do and what not to do. You made a very informed decision at the time. And then your body gave you the answer from the ask, right? So everything that we do with our brain is something that we're asking of our body. I, I'm going to train on this in the midlife mindset shift course about what we do with our fitness, right? We ask our body to perform in a certain way. And then our body answers us with things like fatigue, stress fractures, sore muscles, heart rate, all those things are how our body is responding to what our expectation is. And we got to really learn how to listen to those so that we can train efficiently and really train for our future self. So all good things for sure. Dr. Valerie, yep. Um, it was not a pleasant answer. No, not at all. And now you know, right? So now you don't have to have anybody else tell you that you have that own personal experience. You can, you can go back on and Rebecca, great discussion. Thank you so much. Okay. So I'm out of here. We are celebrating my son's 22nd birthday today. So we're going to go out and have a fabulous memory making dinner with our family. Um, as always, if you guys need anything from me, I am, I, I try to be as available as I can, but I also try to live my life. So if I miss something from you, don't take it personally. I probably just missed it. Um, always circle back around. If it's really important, you can leave it in the comment section. You can DM me whatever you need to do. And I do my best to get back to you. Our class is starting on July the 2nd. It is the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course. It is not, uh, is not live. It is all online. Um, and then when you get, when you become a graduate, then we call you our graduates and we love having our graduate community here as well. Okay. Have a good Monday. I'll see you guys back here on Thursday at noon central standard time. If you have something you want me to discuss, always feel free to shoot the idea to me. I'm always welcome and open to uh, sharing your guys' thoughts as well. And then tomorrow at 11, uh, one o'clock central standard time, I will be on Instagram. We talk about different things pertaining to intermittent fasting over there. And then on Friday on Instagram at 1 PM central standard time, we talk about things like the question that came up today about the lumen and, um, blood glucose testing and all those kind of things. So if you have those kind of questions, we can save that for Friday. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes. I will let him know. Shelly, I'm struggling between 14 and 16 hour fast due to my crazy early 4 a.m. work schedule. No problems on my days off getting to 16, still training my early morning hunger hormones. Yeah, it's all training and discipline. And if you stick with it, I promise you your body will thank you in kind. All right, Lone, you're welcome. Have a good one, you guys.